Welcome back to Mathematical Linguistics. In this video, we're going to introduce the pumping lemma for regular languages. So we're going to use the pumping lemma to show that some languages are not regular. So in this video, we're going to see proofs for the first time. I'm going to informally prove the pumping lemma, but when we prove that languages are not regular, we will use a formal proof style. Do not be afraid, we will get through this. So, what is the pumping lemma? Well, if we have a string w in a regular language r, we can pump a part of it so that it will always be in R. So if R is zero sigma star one, let's say for instance, we have a string that follows this pattern. So zero one one. What we can do is we can take this middle part one and we can pump it up. And pumping really just means repeating a part of it. So zero one one, well, we can now pump the one up so there's an additional one. So we can have zero one one, one. So we pumped up the one once. We can also pump things down. So we'd just be left with zero one. And we can pump these things up infinite amount of times. So, well, of course our string has to be finite when we take a look at them, but let's pump it up so we can end up with a bunch of ones and then a one. And this is still all going to be in this regular language. So if this is true for anything we choose to pump in a string in our language, then, well, it's still gonna be in the regular language and the language is regular. So we're gonna use this pumping lemma to show that some languages are not regular. But more precisely, if R is a regular language, then there's some pump length P, such that if the length of string W and R is at least P, then we can split W up into three parts, X, Y, and Z, such that we can pump Y up and down and it's still going to be in R. The length of y is going to be greater than zero, so this means we are picking something to pump up and down. And the first half here, x and y, are going to be less than or equal to p. Okay, so it's very formal talk. Uh, let's go over this a little bit in more depth. So the first part, it says that whatever y we take, we can have xz is going to be an r, we can have xyz, xyyz, xyy, a bunch of y's, and then a z, so on and so forth, and those will always be in R. But we have to start with the string xyz that's already in R. Okay, y is greater than zero, but this means we don't want to be pumping something like lambda and saying, oh yeah, it's great. And xy less than or equal to p, this means that we have to find our y before we reach the pumping length. So what is the pump length? Well, this is really just the number of states in our finite state machine, at least in the informal proof. So let's show informally that if a language is regular, we should be able to pump some part of it. Okay, so we have some pump length P. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a string w, which is going to be greater than p. So what this means is we're going to have to loop through some of these states. So for instance, let's have our starting state, and it's going to point to some q1, and it's going to keep going, and then it's going to end up at some state, say, qk. Okay, and it's going to continue on its journey, and it's going to hit some other state, which is ql and then it'll keep going, and then eventually it'll finish at some state, uh, we'll just call it capital F. So we have a start and a finish. Okay, so our string is greater than the pump length. So this means at some point, we're going to reach a state that was similar to a previous state. So for instance, we could say, look, this part right here, maybe this was a loop. So maybe qk and ql are equal to each other. Okay, so what this means is we can take our portion here to be x, we can take whatever's in the loop to be y, and then we can take the remaining bit to be z. So what this means is if we have a loop here, then we don't even actually have to do the loop. We can skip the loop entirely, which means we can pump it down. But if we want, we can do it more than once, so we can keep pumping it up and up and up. So what this states is because there's a loop here, 
we can skip it or do it multiple times and it should still be accepted by the machine because we're going around in circles. Okay, so we've seen this before. Um, a quick example, uh, let's say we have three states here, so one or zero goes here. We can take as many ones as we want and then we can take a zero and then it ends up in the final state. So this is a nice machine because what we can do is we can accept the string one zero, we can accept the string one one zero, one 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 zero. So we can see that if we take one, we can pump it up or we can pump it down. And it's still in our language and it's still accepted by the machine. Okay, so how do we prove that a language R is not regular? Well, first we're gonna assume that it is regular. So we're gonna assume there's some loop in the system that we can abuse and we can pump up and we can pump down. So we're gonna pick a string that is in R that satisfies the properties we need. And then we're going to pump it such that the string is no longer in R. So remember our pumping lemma states that, hey, if there is a loop, we can remove the loop or we can do the loop multiple times. But when we prove it's not regular, we're gonna say, hey, if we do this loop a couple more times or if we don't do it at all, it turns out the machine no longer accepts it Therefore, it's not actually possible to construct the machine in the first place at all. Okay, so let's do a nice example. R, A n to the B n. So what this means is that we have some number of A's followed by the same number of B's. So for instance, we could have A B, we could have A A B B, A A A B B B, so on and so forth. If you want, you can try to show that this is a regular language by constructing a finite state machine. Good luck, you can't. But you can try. And in fact, it might be nice to try and show yourself that it's impossible. Okay, so let's show it's not regular. So we're going to assume that it is. So we're going to assume that R is regular. So first we're gonna say, okay, so we have some pump length P and remember there's three conditions. We have to have that x, y, i to the z is going to be in R for all of our i is greater or equal to zero. We have that our y is going to be greater than zero. And then we also have that x, y has to be less than or equal to p. So let's take the string a to the hmm, p minus one and then b to the p minus one. Okay, so we're using our pumping length in here so we know when we can stop. So we're saying that x, y has to be less than or equal to p. So really what this means is we can take all of our a's and then a b and then this is where the pump length p is. And then the rest of the b's continue on. So we have to choose our x and y somewhere before p. So there's three possible cases we can have. Case one is that we pick all of these X's or all of these A's to be X and then we just pump B. So we could say um, Y is equal to B. Okay, so let's do that. So we know that this A P to the minus one, B to the P minus one is in R. So let's pump it down. Let's pump this B down. Then what we're left with is going to be A to the P minus one. But then we pumped one B down, so we got rid of this B here. And then we're left with B to the P minus two. Okay, but now we don't have the same number of A's and B's. So if we pump it down, it's not going to be in R. Similarly, if we pump it up one and we add another B, it's also not gonna be in R because we're going to have an extra B than we do A's. So if we pick Y to be B, it's not going to be good. Okay, but the second case is what if we say that Y is equal to AB? Well, surely that's fine then. So if we pump it down and we remove AB, then we're going to get A to the P minus 2, B to the P minus 2, and that's going to be okay. That's going to be an R. However, what happens if we pump it up? Well, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna be left with this string. A, A, 
then we get a B, then we get an A, then we get a B, B, and it goes to Bs. So we have the same number of A's and B's, however, we have this problem here. Our original language was A to the N, B to the N. But here, we have something that's more like A to the N, B, A, B to the N. That's not good. That's not our original language. So this is not going to be in our regular language. So no matter which one we pick, no matter which case we choose, if we pump it up or pump it down, there's some cases where it's not going to be in our language anymore. So we can conclude that this language, A and B and, is not regular. Because we assumed it was, we picked our string to pump, and then magically, doesn't work. Okay, so A to the N, B to the N is not possible to do with finite state machines. It is not a regular language. Okay, let's do one more example. 0 to the i, 1 to the j, where i is greater than j. Okay, so this just means that we have more zeros than ones. So for instance, we could have 0, we could have 0, 0, 1, we could have 0, 0, 0, 1, so on and so forth. We could have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, so on and so forth. So as long as we have more zeros than ones, we're good. So let's pick our strings smartly here. So I don't want to do too many cases. So let's take 0 to the p, 1 to the p minus 1. OK. So this seems pretty nice. We have more zeros than we have ones. So our pumping length is cut off here. So what this means is when we take our x, y, and z, our y is going to be some number of zeros. It has to be at least one zero. OK, so what happens if we pump y down? So we have our x, y, z is going to be in our language r. But what about xz? What if we pump zeros down? Well, let's say we have one zero. Let's say, let's say y is just equal to zero. Then xz is going to be zero to the p minus one, one to the p minus one. And here, the number of zeros is equal to the number of ones. So it's not in our language. So this is not in R. Therefore, if we use the pumping lemma here, we see that it's not satisfied. So if we pump it down, 0 to the p minus 1, 1 to the p minus 1 is not in our language. Therefore, it can't be regular. So this also is not regular. So that's the pumping lemma. And next video, we're going to use these examples to show that English and other human languages are also not regular. So we cannot model language with finite state machines. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, this is definitely a tricky topic to be covering in less than 14 minutes. Uh, so if you have any questions, please ask, and I will do the best that I can to respond to them.